one of the hacker groups used automate, automated uh, systems to remove data. Damn! In an uncommon move, the attacker used the customer's existing systems, including e-discovery. Hi, my name is Mark Janelle Jr. If you're new here, I do cyber-related videos. Hold on, Windows 11 automation tool can easily be hacked. I just updated my computer. Why is Windows 11 easily be able to hack? Okay, let's get right into it. We're going dark. So this is courtesy of Matt Burgess at Wired. So hackers can use Microsoft's power automated to uh, automate to push out ransomware and keyloggers if they get machine access first. Automating mundane work tasks uh, has become easier over the past few years. Using drag and drop automation software, you can track your working hours in a spreadsheet or automatically create a to-do list item when someone mentions you in an email. The tools can make your life easier, but they carry risks. One security researcher has found a way to hijack Microsoft software automation tool to send ransomware to connected machines and steal data from devices. The attack uses um, the automation tool as it was designed. But instead of sending legitimate actions, it can be used to deploy malware, says Michael B., the co-founder and CTO of security firm Zenity, which is behind the work. My research showed that you can very easily, as an attacker, take advantage of all of this infrastructure to do exactly what is supposed to do, uh, 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 um, Burgery says. <laughs> Sorry. I, I, you know, I, I, so, you know, so, you then use it to run your own payloads instead of the enterprise payloads. The researcher documented his work at the DEF CON hacker conference last month and has since released the code. The attack is based on Microsoft's Power Automate, an automation tool that was built into Windows 11. Power Automate uses a form of robotic process automation, also known as RPA, in which a computer mimics a human's actions to complete tasks. If you want to get a notification each time an RSS feed is updated, you can build a custom RPA process to make that happen. Thousands of these automations exist and Microsoft software can link up Outlook, Teams, Dropbox, and other apps. The software is part of a broader low-code, no-code movement that aims to create tools people can use to create things um, without having any uh, coding knowledge. Every business user now has the power that the developer used to have, uh, Burgery says. His company exists to help secure low-code, no-code apps. Burgery's research starts from a position in which a hacker has already gained access to someone's computer, whether through phishing or an insider threat. While computers within businesses are frequently insecure from a lack of patching and updates, for example, starting at this point means an attacker would have already gotten into a corporate network. Once an attacker has access to a computer, they need to take a few additional steps to abuse the RPA setup, but these are relatively simple. The, there is not a lot of hacking here, says Bar um, Bargery, who dubbed the whole process Power PWN and is documenting it on GitHub. First, an attacker needs to set up a Microsoft Cloud account, known as a tenant, and set it to have admin controls over any machines that are assigned to it. This essentially allows the malicious account to run RPA processes on an end user's device. On the previously compromised machine, all a hack has to do is now assign it to the new admin account. This is done using a simple command line called silent registration. Once you do that, you will get a URL that would allow you, as an attacker, to send payloads to the machine, Burgery says. Ahead of his DEF CON talk, he created multiple demos showing how it is possible to use Power Automated to push out ransomware to impacted machines. Other demos show how an attacker can steal authentication tokens from a machine. You can exfiltrate data outside of the corporate networks through this trusted tunnel. You can build key loggers, you can take information from the clipboard, you can control the browser, Burgery says. A, spokes a spokesperson uh, for Microsoft downplayed the potential of the attack, pointing out that an account would need to have been accessed by an attacker before it could be used. 
there's no mechanism by which a fully updated machine with antivirus protections can be remotely compromised using this technique. The spokesperson says, right? This technique relies on a hypothetical scenario where a system is already compromised or susceptible to a compromising. <laughs> wow, you know. <laughs> Anyways. Or susceptible to a compromise using existing techniques like social engineering, both for the initial and any subsequent network attack, the spokesperson adds, recommending that people keep their systems up to date. This type of attack could be hard to detect as it uses official systems and processes throughout, Burgery says. When you think about the architecture, this is a remote code execution tool that is built by Microsoft and signed by Microsoft all throughout the way. Burgery says he published demos and the steps needed to conduct the attack to help raise awareness of the potential issues companies face. Before his DEF CON talk, Microsoft Teams reached out to him, Burgery says, and pointed out the, that business network admins, admins can restrict access to Power Automate tools by adding a registry entry to their devices. This process would put controls on the account types that can sign into Power Automate, thus reducing the potential for the system to be abused. However, to be successful, Burgery says, the move re relies upon security teams having consistent and clear policies across their organizations, which isn't always the case. While the popularity of RPA tools is increasing, they have already been real-world attacks designed to abuse the platforms. In early 2020, Microsoft's security team found six hacker groups, including a Chinese APT, inside the network of one company. One of the hacker groups used automate, automated uh, systems to remove data. In an uncommon move, the attacker used the customer's existing systems, including eDiscovery, the compliance search feature, and Microsoft Flow to automate stealing its search results. Microsoft wrote in the incident report, as the possible risk around low-code, no-code applications become more obvious, Burgery says companies may need to reassess their policies. It's very important to monitor what RPA agents are doing, he says. You cannot really expect to provide all of the business users in an enterprise capabilities that were, up until a few months ago, reserved only to developers and expect everything to go well. These two, right? You can't do that. You can't do that. You can't just do that and then, you know, you just do that, right? You can't do that and then do that. <laughs> so what do you guys think? What do you guys think I should do? I just updated Windows 11. Should I buy another computer? Because I can't un-update. Let's get the conversation started. That's your news. Please feel free to watch, like, and comment other videos on this channel. Subscribe now.